Namaste. Welcome to BA Master. Meditation is building a dam against thought energies, as said by Brahma Shripita Mahapatriji. This week, we have one more young and energetic master with us. Without any further delay, let's get started. Hi, Lahri. Hello. Hi. When did you start your journey? I guess around third or fourth grade, my dad came into meditation and then he introduced me to it. Okay. So, tell us about your parents and siblings. I have an elder sister and my dad and my mom, like my dad is like Balakrishna Garu and my mom is Sunita. So, yeah, my dad like came into meditation around 2000 or something through his cousin. And then uh, he started doing it and slowly everyone in the family started doing it. Okay. So, you have one elder sister. Mm. Okay. So, the whole family does meditation. Yeah, like my sister doesn't do it that much. But yeah, we are all into the meditation path. Okay. So, you learnt about meditation at a very young age. Yeah. So, you continued with that? Like there were ups and downs. Like sometimes I did it, sometimes I couldn't do it. But I was not a person who does it regularly. Like these days I'm trying my best to do it regularly every single day. But usually I'm not a person who does it regularly. Like whenever I feel like doing I do it. So there were times in my teens when I didn't do it, when I used to use that as a weapon. Like you know what, you irritate me, I won't do meditation. You don't buy me that, I won't do meditation. But yeah, just with the constant nagging or whatever you want to call it with my dad like he would always push me to do meditation and all that so only with him and my mom that I could continue in the path yes yes and uh, your dad Balakrishna sir is a very senior uh, meditator in our uh, permit spiritual society and his contribution towards society is uh, quite memorable and uh, we are glad for having him in our society actually and uh, how about your uh, parents being a meditators how was your uh, childhood it has shaped me a lot like them being meditators like the teachings in my house were widely different like there are a lot of meditators would come home especially now though it is all media oriented like you know with, through social media you're learning a lot about meditation and there's a lot of spread but those days they like people would come there were like gatherings and all that so i would love like sitting at home people would gather they would discuss about different topics i would never read much books but listening to them speak about different topics and asking questions i learned a lot and then my parents also my dad like he liked the concept of uh, told by seth master so he would uh, do his best to integrate those teachings into our life so there's this thing called you create your own reality. Even though I wouldn't really understand much at an young age, th that would always be constantly drilled into my head that sometimes it just would come out of my mouth and you know what, I can do this. I am creating this, right? So like that, there were many meditation teachings which shaped me being who I am. And I think I had a very happy childhood. Like there were obviously ups and downs, but my look on it, I think I was very happy. I'm glad for that. That's completely because of meditation and the teachings of it. You have your own friends and circle everything. And uh, can you find a difference between your friends' parents, non-meditators, and your parents are meditators and they're hardcore doing uh, service to a society on all these things. Can you find difference in the parenting? Yeah, a lot of difference. I would say my parents are very liberal. Like they do have little bit of rules like what is right what is wrong but they don't have the tight hold on me like the tight hold my friends parents have on them it's a very liberal relationship so it's very open like it's more like friendly relationship so i actually consider my parents to be one of my best friends so i share a lot with them like having them to be my best friends they guided me a lot like when I was not sure like what path to go on, let it be in any way, let it be in a relationship or let it be in studies or in any way, the important decisions of my life, I can obviously speak with my friends, but they're of my same age group, right? So we all will be having, thinking in the same way, our thought patterns will be almost similar, like in the same frequency. But my parents, they gave me a fresh perspective and them being open made me speak out loud with them without any hesitations regarding what I want and what I don't want and they gave a lot of clarity. So do you think uh, this is all possible only through meditation? Yeah, definitely. When you are meditating, uh, there's a change within you which comes out very slowly in some people but comes out fast in other people but it brings a huge change within you, become more and more connected with 
who you are, the true self who you are, and that self is always very beautiful and fragrant and loving. So when you are living in that loving atmosphere of people who are meditating, obviously that shapes who I am, right? That shapes the parenting and uh, how I am growing. Yeah, it shaped their uh, love and fragrance and the openness to vivid different concepts and different realities made my life very different compared to others, made my opinions and thinkings and choices very different. So once a person becomes meditator, once he starts his meditation, then while changing his own uh, patterns and uh, personality, the, even the environment gets changed. Yeah, definitely. And definitely that impacts on uh, his environment uh, and everything. So th those are the benefits of meditation. Yeah. Yeah, that impacts a lot. So being a parenting or you know in a relationship, whatever the relationship might be, then definitely that relationship will have an impact. Definitely. definitely. So our meditation practice will help us in every way possible. Because uh, we should be cool enough. Then that impacts our relation. Good. And uh, how about your studies? How it helped your uh, in your studies or whatever? I actually did aeronautical engineering. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm working in PMC, like two completely different paths. And even while I was doing aeronautical engineering, everyone were like, no, don't do it. Like, it doesn't have much future. It's very difficult, hard to do. You have to go outside and everything. But I was very keen on doing it. You know, this is what I want. I always wanted to be a pilot and I couldn't be. Uh, due to some, I have like hearing issues, I couldn't be, was not qualified for that. So I thought like, you know what, let me learn aeronautics and I fired a tooth and nail to be an aeronautical engineering and I did it. I did it successfully. Along the way, I realized that this is not for me. I might lead a successful life, but I won't be very happy and I thought I have to search for my happiness which gives me somewhere else. So I took a break of six months. So. Only the reason now I could come back and work in PMC, integrate myself into this meditative path as a career, I could do that only because my parents were meditators. Like, who would allow their kid to study and invest in their life in one stream of education and let them do work in completely different? Obviously, there are a lot of engineers who do it completely different, but at least they gave a clean shot of working in aeronautical unlike me. I just worked as six months in aeronautical engineering. But them being meditators gave me the freedom to choose what I want. If I would have chosen something else, like, you know, I was given the choice of doing computers or arts or some other stuff. If I would have chosen that, I would have carried that resentment with me for four long years and that would have shaped my life completely. I would have probably gone a, towards a darker path or probably left meditation, probably resented my parents for it. So them giving the freedom to do what I want and supporting me along the way through the hardships, that happens only because they are meditators. And yeah, the way they think changed a lot because they are meditators. So coming to this hardships and the challenges, you know, whatever. So any non-favorable situation, you can call in that way. How do you handle yourself? So sometimes I remember like, you know what, I can do this, this can be done. I try to be as optimistic as possible, but there are other times where I just can't rely on myself that I'm too down the path to be clear headed and all that. Those times, actually it is my dad and my mom who helped me a lot. Like they guide me. Like, you know what, just sit in meditation. Sometimes you're too down the path where you don't even want to do meditation, where meditation doesn't even, you can't even sit still for two minutes. But it is their patience, like, you know what, you can do it. Just sit in meditation. That can solve your choices, problems and everything. So yeah, recently I was going into that dark phase. Like nothing was working out and all that. And then I again started doing meditation. It was not possible before, but I again started doing meditation. It was because of their guidance, I could come back to it. So they helped me a lot when I was too into it. The other times, yeah, I could come out of it on my own. I could rely on myself, the inner strength I have within me, the soul strength I have within me, I could rely on it and walk past it. Anything is possible. We can do anything and everything, right? So you just have to have a little bit of courage. What do you think really happens in meditation? How uh, these things happen? Actually, how you were out of this? What happened in meditation? What do you so think? When we are in our low point, it is basically that our energy system is uh, not so high. 
simply speaking in a not so high so we can't think straight we attract all sort of uh, things in our life unwanted things in our life no i'm not saying negative but they're usually unwanted that hinder our growth so when we meditate we realign with ourselves and with the universe and we invite this cosmic energy or light into our life and slowly our energy system turns out to be better it increases and everything all these unwanted things which are causing problems to us which are hindering us in solving the problem most of the time we can't solve a problem because of all this unwanted stuff which we attract because of our energy system when we meditate these things slowly start getting away from us so in the presence of light there is no negative energy that can't stand the lower frequency energy can't stand so these move on once again you start integrating with yourself and with the universe and things again start to look up and you have the strength to clear up your issues you have the strength to work on them think clearly in a different way think innovatively and solve them so every day doing meditation is nothing but decluttering our own mind yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> unwanted things and unwanted everything all this stuff will die away yeah yes they do that so daily practice of meditation will help us a lot in many ways possible definitely and uh, this gives us strength in our uh, low points or you know uh, whatever in any unfavorable situations or whatever when we are in that we will get all the strength yeah so how about your uh, works and uh, contribution towards the society what are you are in actively in right now i'm working in pmc kids so my goal right now is to provide a meditation content in the most beautiful way possible to the kids so that they feel attracted towards it they can take the concepts uh, it doesn't have to be like you know what this is meditation and all that just like provide it to them in an innovative way so that they can grasp it and start using it in their life and just gain the fruits of it as i have gained from my childhood so that is what i am working in right now so why do you think uh, meditation is necessary for kids it's a good question because kids generally it is said to be kids are a representation of gods or another uh, form of gods so why do they need meditation <laughs> but the thing is that the society has a uh, influenced kids parents kids and adults a lot that kids at a very young age have cut off from themselves usually at an during olden times kids used to be in connection with themselves like really olden times uh, they are in connection with who they are they know who they are they can understand the cosmos and everything but now the kids uh, with the rules and restrictions and etiquettes the society has imposed on them they have cut down from themselves and it is it is happening everywhere around us and even the parents don't know that this is happening they're just going on with the rules they know passed on to them or they read in some book or something so by meditating they are becoming again in connection they are getting one with themselves when they are getting one with themselves they are at this ripe age where they can easily connect with the cosmos gain the knowledge from it understand the mysteries of themselves and the cosmos and once they understand those mysteries once they understand who they are the infinite power in them none of the things that we find hard none of the things that we find impossible as a kid things like you know what learning a language or uh, participating in some competition or even learning in uh, studying a new subject none of that it finds for them impossible because they have all that knowledge within them even the simple mathematics kids find at a certain age addition is hard right but kids who are meditating who understand who they are find they can do more than addition everything is possible for them it's our responsibility as an adult as a parent as a guide to provide them those tools where they can discover who they are mm-hmm. so that's why meditation for kids is very important actually yeah. yes they are the future yeah yes and uh, do you read books yeah i read books not a lot but yeah if i read books <laughs> can you just mention few which you have read and uh i read sita inam okay. uh that like i love that book a lot and um, mm-hmm. i'm reading anesthesia now and i read uh, richard bach's illusions and 
few of Seth books <laughs> of the mind. Like uh, I'm Bringers of the Dawn. Trying to read Seth, Seth, but I'm currently on anesthesia. Can you share a few points? Yeah. Uh, which inspired you or any of the books we had you have read? I would like to share one experience of mine when I read Seth. I know. I read that book in like two days span of time. So one day I just like logged myself in the room and I started reading it. I, like uh, that was the point where I was very active in my imagination and uh, I, I meditation books I read few of them but I love to read fiction books and I would read all sort of fiction like let there be violence, let there be romance or let, let it be boring stuff or let it be some historical stuff. I read all sort of fiction just not the documentaries mm -hmm. and autobiographies. So the content I used to read, read uh, I would read it for uh, to learn about the psychology of people and all that. So at one point it stopped being about learning about psychology and just reading it for fun. So there was this one point, one para in Sita Inam, uh, where a young woman is being raped and Sita goes there. And then she heals the woman. And then uh, when Rama comes, she asks him, like, what is going on in this society? Women are being raped for just the fun out of it, just without any reason. And she was raped because the guy who raped her had a dispute with the girl's father and he did it out of revenge. And then Rama says that this thing about abusing women has been going on for many centuries. But doing it not for fun, but doing it out of revenge or some other pathetic reason is because of new thought forms released by Ravana. And Ravana, who was at Sri Lanka, the south of India, outside India, from there his thought forms were acting somewhere north of India where Sita and Rama were residing. That's, that's when I realized that the thoughts we release, the books we read. Uh, see, if I'm reading a book, I'm attracting that energy, right? So I might be of a well protected that nothing might not happen to me. But somehow when I'm reading it, I'm attracting that energy and releasing that energy into the universe. Someone who is not well protected like me, who is not uh, knowledgeable how to protect themselves in energy levels, they get attracted to it. So I am doing a bad deed where I'm releasing negative energy, attracting negative energy and releasing it, right? So when I realized that, I started crying. I started crying, crying, crying. I cried a lot. Uh, I just didn't cry for the thoughts I released in this life. I started crying for the thoughts I released in all my lives. I cried so badly. And I loved that experience because it is a clear physical difference in me after that. I stopped reading those sort of books which attracted negative energies. I stopped watching those movies which are filled with crime and violence. I stopped interacting with those people. Uh, I would never really interact much, but somehow those people were pushed out of my life too, who were thinking ill thoughts. All that happened just by reading one book. I still believe that Sitainam, uh, just like any other meditation book, has codes of light, love, messages embedded in it which we are not aware, but only when we read it, we take them in the form of energy and transform ourselves. That is one experience I love about reading Sita Inam. It is uh, really an amazing episode actually that happened. And uh, it's, uh, you know, you took us back to that book you, <laughs> by recollecting this point. And uh, yeah, because uh, our thoughts, that's what Patriji says, miraculous thinking, miraculous thoughts, disastrous thinking, disastrous thought. So we are responsible here. Uh, that's what uh, in that episode, uh, Sitama says that. So here, now you felt that uh, now you are uh, perfectly a self-responsible person. So you just wanted to change yourself. Yes. Yeah. Well, so whatever fear or uh, disastrous thinking we have, that not just affects us, but the whole society, whole earth, yeah. all people get affected because we are all in a chain. So we should be more responsible. We should be more aware. So that's what uh, with this episode we realize. Yes, that uh, quite um, an amazing episode which you have shared. We are glad for that and uh, tell us some more points. We would like to hear you. Yes. <laughs> so recently I read Anastasia, which I really loved a lot. How you call uh, Krishna, Patriji, Buddha an enlightened being. Not just an enlightened being, a being who came onto the earth solely just for the service to the universe not out of selfish needs and everything, just for the service of the universe. She is one such being who lives in Russia. So this book is about her. 
she lives in a forest in Russia, filled with cedar trees and everything. So a man called Valmidr, I think that's how you pronounce, meets her. He is a non-meditator. He he is a actually an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He doesn't know meditation of any sort. He meets her by chance. At least he thinks he meets her by chance. And the book is about the conversation between him and Anastasia. So we get to know that Anastasia dwells in forest, living one with the nature. And like, what is different over here is that we come across some people who are living in forest, like let them be tribes or let them be people who are who live so deep into the forest, they never even saw civilization. They have integrated themselves into the forest land. But the difference between them and Anastasia here is she's just not living with the nature. She's an enlightened being living in the nature. She, with the teachings from her grandfather and her great grandfather, she grew up and she can speak with the stars, she can speak with the masters. And uh, the thing, uh, she knows all sort of languages. She can understand what is deep within you. She knows how to gain the maximum from nature and live in peace and harmony with the nature. Uh, she just says like very simple tips how to garden. Uh, how to get the best out of things. We think that, you know, just like plant a tree and like you get some fruits and you eat it, right? She says that uh, there are some procedures to be followed where you can get them, gain the maximum from the trees. The thing over here is that from the, uh, like you plant a tree out of love, the tree can feel your love. It starts working towards providing the best to you. And actually all trees start working towards providing the best to you, but the a tree that you planted out of love starts doing it more. And the fruits it gives or the vegetables it gives, they are full of cosmic energy, full of energy that you need to get rid of all the negative energy and diseases within you. So it's like very simple harmony that you can live with nature. Just like washing your feet near the tree releases the toxins from your body, right? So the tree understands like what you want and gives you the fruit. And you eat from the tree, she has like within one year or three years or something, I don't remember, you'll be rid of all sort of critical diseases, any diseases and everything. So one thing I learned from that book is like how to live in harmony with nature and how to get the maximum out of it and then understand nature. She friendships with wild animals, she dances with bears, she sleeps with bears, she plays with wolf cubs and all this is being seen by a non-meditator. And we see the struggle he faces in understanding such a beautiful being. He calls her a mad woman. He, he calls her so many stuff, but she just loves him. That shows like how beautiful these enlightened beings are, how loving they are towards the beings who know nothing, who, who don't know the workings of the universe. She, she communicates with stars and everything. I just love that book. In that book, she says about one stuff. We call, now we are speaking about the end of the world, third world war, right? She says that in 1920s or 70s, I don't remember the exact time, the end of the world was about to happen. A lot of natural calamities were about to happen, but it has been diverted. It didn't happen, it like postponed. And when Varmadar asks her, like, why did it happen? She says that the only reason this has been postponed is because of the gardeners who worked in Russia. So people generally think that if something of that huge massive scale has been postponed because of politicians, right? Or some scientists or someone who are highly knowledgeable in the workings of science and technology. But it is to the gardeners and farmers. So when asked why this happened, how are they interlinked? She says that during that time, Russia gave those people of their country few acres of land to work on. And then we didn't have much technology then. So they started working on the land with their hands. They started uh, doing it with out of love, just out of love. As they started interacting with the land, they, it started bringing transformation within them. And the love they started showing towards the land. Till then, Mother Earth was in a state that I can't take this anymore. I'm like letting go, I'm, I'm about to burst. And that little bit of love, those farmers showed to the Mother Earth, gave her the strength to move on, gave her the strength to hold on for a little bit longer. And even now, she told that to honor them, we have to have a gardener's day. And she just released the thought into the universe. 
and they showed like how beautifully she released how the universe was responding to her thought she she got beautiful visualization and everything what should be done on that day like you have to go eat those fruits enjoy it share it with your family fruits and vegetables because they're filled with love and energy and not spend the day with your phone but spend the day with yourself just for one hour spend the day with your family thanking the nature and releasing this love vibrations to the universe and till now it is followed in russia the government has declared a gardeners day and the russian people follow it like according to their convenient they follow it in many parts of russia so what i want to say over here is that we see farmers gardeners people who work on the garden even the even our parents who even our siblings and even ourselves who work on gardens right so we think just as people who like plants just as people who like nature but the work they are doing is much beyond the one we can comprehend they are not they are no less we can thank farmers for the food they provide but we should thank them for the love they are showing earth we should thank them for the for saving us always saving us with the love they are showing mother earth and we are doing far less than what they are doing we should be more like them yes yes be in one with nature love nature that is true because there are so many angels and masters astral masters who are just helping us there while working relentlessly even though in this uh, era and in this light age tremendously and uh, we should thank them a lot and uh, what people feel is that what they see with these two eyes they feel that politicians will save us or some other will save us some government will come and save us but no we should save ourselves we should be responsible yes that's what uh, we like earlier what you have said that fear energies are how the thought forms are affecting here also the thought forms are affecting yeah. but these are the positive ones yeah. love energies and uh, you know graceful energies gratitude energies these all so every person should uh, show that yeah should be filled up with this kind of energy we are in need of these energies right now Yeah. <laughs> so yes that is true and uh, wonderful lahri for sharing all this uh, you know taking us to the <laughs> times and again you are sharing us uh, wonderful we are very uh, grateful for that and uh, would like to hear more if you want to you know share us any any excerpts or whatever from books i yeah. have to think back whatever your experiences or uh, any any visions your meditation experiences or uh, life experiences which uh, enlightened you anything Actually, I have a lot of meditation experience, but nothing was striking. I heard that you practice silence, and uh, I watched you also. So, just uh, throw some light on practicing silence. I just love to be with myself, but for the past one year, I didn't find time to just be with myself. I was always interacting with people and everything. So I thought, like you know what, now it's high time that I have to be, I have to do mauna, I have to be silent. So I did it like the last weekend for two days, and. i could understand i could focus more on myself like before that I, due to certain reasons i was not able to focus on meditation and everything but those two days i was able to uh, be in connection with myself I was, i was able to listen to myself and then i went to kartal for the first time actually in the kartal pyramid i could feel the energies of kartal pyramid like i would always go go into the trance state and come out one hour would pass but then i could actually feel the energies everywhere and i know that only it is only because of silence that i could feel that such sensitive things the thing is that with our day to day life sometimes we miss out on meditation some people do it regularly some people like me <laughs> fail to do it regularly and that affects us a lot it on the outer layer it seems like you know what everything is fine i am going on doing a happy life and everything but slowly it starts giving you a little bit little bit uh, tinkering you tinkering you a little bit and there'll be one point where you can't even meditate properly but i would suggest for people who can't meditate who can't focus on meditation try being silent you will start to become sensitive to who you are and the energies surrounding you and you can you will start to meditate well because meditation is the key to inner silence right at least try with the outer silence it will work out on inner silence that is one thing i loved about it recently it's a very vital point which you have shared on silence that impacts us a lot yes and uh, uh, you visited pyramid right tell us about the pyramids it is beautiful it, the interiors were really good and all that 
the last time I went, the work is still going on, but uh, they have done it so beautifully. They have made good use of our donations. <laughs> It's good. It's really beautiful, and I can feel the energy is more. Yes, and uh, uh, tell us about Patri sir. Patri sir, oh, he's an exemplary being. <laughs> <laughs> he's a wonderful human being, and I think I can't even call him a human being because yeah, actually I can call him. We are just like him, right? He is a teacher who says that anything is possible. You just have to meditate. You know what? Meditate everything that gives you the solutions to everything. He's he's a teacher who says that you can be who I am. I'm not someone different. I'm not a god or I'm not some impossible point that you can't reach. I'm just like we feel like he's a Mount Everest or K2 or some Mount Kailash that you can never reach. But it is possible. There are so many people who reach right those impossible peaks, and he's just that. we can reach him we can be like him just by observing him observing the way he is the way he talks the way he thinks just his how he acts we can learn a lot from him and he's a teacher who says that is an immense knowledge you're always learning and there's no end to learning i'm i'm always learning that's what he says right so sometimes in our meditative path we feel like you know what i learned everything or i learned most of it right there's not nothing much to learn and then just remember if people like him are still learning then there's a lot for us to learn to right yes yes <laughs> yeah he says i'm a continuous learner and we are also the same <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing all your uh, insights and your uh, perceptions your view points that's really mind blowing to be frank and uh, we just loved this and uh, we are glad and we are very thankful for having you here thank you keep watching pmc english thank you <laughs>